Hi, welcome to the Fresh AF Show. I'm Austin Furman with my guest, Roy Hamilton. Good to have you here today. Yeah, thank, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Uh, you're the Senior Vice President and Talent of Development for Fox Sports 1. Uh, all right, so let's get straight to it. Uh, before, before you get started, I want to say one thing. I'm impressed with your facility here. This is a pretty impressive place, and the kids who work here and are part of the school should be very, very fortunate and, and blessed that this is a really, really great groundbreaking opportunity to learn a lot in the business. I'm happy to be a part of this with you today. It is, thank you for coming. It is a great opportunity for all of us. Um, so, first of all, who's your role model when you were a kid? Well, you know, I have several. Um, my dad was always one that I, I adhered very, very much because we were very close uh, as a kid growing up. Um, you know, I, I love sports, and sports was a part of his life, too. Uh, but the one thing he did for me, he really balanced my life in terms of academics and sports. And so through the progression of my life and my career, um, he was very instrumental. And then I had other people who were in the sort of business in the area that I was in, along with coaches throughout my life, that were very, very important people for me. Was sports something that you always wanted to pursue, whether it was sports broadcasting or becoming an athlete? Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, all my life, I've always been endeared with television. <clears throat> I've always thought television was most a fascinating uh, opportunity, a fascinating uh, con conjunction, uh, and it was just amazing how people were able to reenact re re lives and create drama and create history and, and redocument history. So I've always loved the television aspect of, of the industry. I wasn't quite sure where I was going to go. Athletics was really, really important for me, and it was instrumental. But uh, my education was probably the, the number one priority for me uh, growing up. But I've always had a fascination of television, sports. I kind of fell into the sports part of it because um, after high school, and I was All-American basketball player at high school and recruited by a lot of different people coming out of high school, it was very important for me to go to an academic uh, university that um, had television and that had motion picture because I really, really enjoyed that, that part of the business. Mm -hmm. Well, what was it like to play in the spotlight at UCLA? Yeah. Well, you know, the spotlight started for me early. It started for me when I was in high school. Uh, we had the number one high school in the country. At the time I was uh, in high school, I went to Bourbon Day High School in South Central. Um, I was recruited by John Wooden, which was an honor and thrill for me uh, to have him appear at some of my games uh, through my career, which was, was pretty amazing. Um, he recruited me, even though I never had an opportunity to play for him, um, he recruited me, and I was one of his last recruits, which I feel very proud of. And, and I, I've always continued to have a very good relationship with him throughout my years at UCLA and, and, in, and until, his, uh, until he passed away. Um, him and I were really, really best of friends, and I enjoyed my experience with him. But getting to your answer, um, the spotlight was pretty impressive at UCLA. And you play at that program at the high level that we were at at that particular time. It was a pretty amazing experience, and to grow and develop and become a good player and then achieve a lot of things I was able to do academically there, too. Um, I graduated in four years. That was my goal, to graduate in four years. So every summer I took a summer school class to make sure that I was going to be on track to graduate in the four-year period that I was at UCLA. Was sports, uh, I'm sorry, was education something that your parents always emphasized? Yeah, I was fortunate to, um, to have that uh, support from my parents and from my mom and from other people who are part of my life, from coaches. They always said, you know, it was great to play athletics. It's good to be good uh, in your skill sets, but make sure that you really, really apply yourself academically because, you know, you never know when that day comes when you have to make that transition in your life, and it could be sooner than later, um, that you have a place that you want to land and that uh, it's a place for you to be happy in. You know, just the, the thing I'm impressed with you is that you're, you're venturing in your career in terms of uh, being an on-air broadcaster. That's really amazing and it's impressive. So stay close to your dreams and those were, for me, those were part of my dreams. Um, when I was at UCLA, I had, I had like three goals in my life uh, before I graduated. I wanted to uh, make sure I graduated in the four-year period. Um, I wanted to be an academic All-American and, and make sure that uh, you know, I, was, I, was, I was solid in that area. And then my, other, my last goal was to be in the first round as a draft pick in the NBA. And so I was the 10th player picked in the first round in 1979. So I came out the same time to Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and that period. And so that was pretty, pretty amazing accomplishment for me. As you said, you were the 10th overall, 10th overall pick in the 1979 NBA draft selected by the Pistons, Detroit Pistons. 
Your NBA career was short. Is there anything that you would like to mention? Well, yeah, it was short. You know, um, you know, time means everything. You have to be at the right place, right time. Um, you know, for, unfortunately for me, at the time I was at Detroit, uh, the head coach who was there was fired after 12 games. So now you go through transition of different people. And I love I love basketball and I love the sport, but that what that didn't define me as an individual. So I continued playing. I played a couple more years, and I was out, traded to Portland and played for the Trailblazers. And then I realized to myself, I said, you know what? It's really time for me to really pursue my goals and my, pursue my dreams while I had those opportunities. And I met a lot of important people through the road of my life and the journey of my life and people who were instrumental in uh, creating opportunities for me in the industry. Um, when I was, it was interesting, when I was coming out of high school, and you would never know this, um, the local sports announcer in Los Angeles was Brian Gumbel. Brian Gumbel um, was the local sports guy, and he covered my signing going to UCLA. So from there, I bonded a relationship with him, and when I was at UCLA, I interned at NBC. And so from there, the executive producer who was there remembered me, and when I stopped playing, things started to come into play, and I really was able and very fortunate to get other opportunities for myself in the sports industry. And at that time, I still wasn't quite sure whether I was going to be on the air or in production. And I'll never I'll remember the moment that changed it for me. I was doing the UCLA games. I filled in for Bill Walton for one season, and I was doing the UCLA games as an analyst. And I remember the producer and the director kept talking in my ear, telling me what they wanted and where they wanted to go in the broadcast. And I said to myself, it hit me, I said, wait a minute. I know the sport. All I really knew, need to do is learn their skill sets, and I can really be a very good producer. So that's how I transitioned myself from being on air as a game analyst <clears throat> into the production side. So I was fortunate, and then I went to CBS Sports in New York, and that's how, I, how my career kind of just uh, evolved. Do you have one real main mentor that really pushed you through the process of going through sport, uh, being an NBA player to the sports broadcasting business? Yeah, I have a, uh, a very good friend of mine, Rick Moose, and another gentleman, uh, George McCorn. George McCorn was my high school coach, and Rick Moose was a very instrumental person in my life. It's like a father to me. And he helped guide me and, 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 and set platform for me and goals for me and for goals for me to achieve. Um, you know, it, uh, so it was, it was really having, great having those people in your life. And then fortunately for me, once I got into the business, I would wind up getting really good uh, mentors from um, the president uh, who was at uh, Fox Sports, Ed Gorin, was at CBS Sports when I was at CBS Sports in New York. Fox Sports, basically, and most people don't realize, Fox Sports started in 1994. So it really hasn't been around a long time. And, you, and for you, obviously, it's a household name, but it's only been around since 1994. And I was a part of the group that came to Fox Sports in the beginning as a producer, as a young producer. So uh, he was a tremendous mentor, Ed Gorin was. And then there was David Hill, who was also the president at, at, uh, at Fox Sports, too. So those are two people that are actually in the industry that really, really helped my career path. Tell us about your day-to-day -day job responsibilities right now. Well, part of my uh, job responsibility is is working with talent. Like a young person like you, looking at reels that you, you young people will, will send me from the, uh, they'll send me or their agents will send me and I'll look at their reels, critique them, um, make suggestions to our group at Fox of people that we have like on our radar screen. <clears throat> For example, Joe Clack is one of our football analysts. Br uh, Brady Quinn is another gentleman. Um, you know, uh, Sean Merriman is another person that I work with. And what I do, and Randy Moss too, and, and we, when we just hired Champ Bailey uh, to do our studio show, what I do is take a lot of, the, especially most of the athletes um, that will always love to be coached, you know, and I'm, I'm really good at helping them with their skill sets. So I coach them basically like a coach. And so I'll take anyone and help them develop their skills, give them idea. And, and, and for, for myself, I have good production background so I can help them in that aspect and then actually from a consumer perspective give them a general idea of what the viewers at home are looking forward to seeing. So those are kind of my day to day in terms of working with people and, and also continue looking for young and fresh talent. Would you say you're on the upper half, upper, upper third, upper quarter of the hierarchy at Fox Sports? Yeah, I would say so, especially when it comes to on-air people because you know um, that's your brand that identifies who you are the talent that you actually are putting on the air. So um, being a part of that group of making selection. Now, hey, you know, you're not going to hit home runs all the time. You're going to have hit and miss, but you, you really want to build a good brand for yourself and a good reputation. So uh, I feel like I'm, at, I'm in the upper echelon in my career. You know, I'm a senior vice president now, which was 
you know, a tremendous goal for me and as I got myself into the management side of the business because in, be, in the beginning for me, I was producing and produced a lot of games, so I traveled every week producing. And I have an opportunity to be on the management side. It's been really, really remarkable for me, and I'm, I feel very blessed. When are you most satisfied during your job? I beg your pardon? When are you most satisfied during your job? I'm, I think the thing that makes me feel good is that if I can create an opportunity for someone to excel in their business, excel in their career, and excel in their skill sets, whether it's an opportunity with us at Fox or it's with ESPN or whoever it may be, that's what I become more proud of more than anything else is just having an opportunity to guide someone with my experience and to help them um, you know, move forward in their career path is I mean, the most daring thing for me. And one thing I'm, I'm impressed with you, you know, you and I, we met a couple of weeks ago and I, I told you I would love to be able to be a part of your show and you were very aggressive and you had initiative to wanting to do that and I'm really proud of you. So all you need to do is just continue to work hard at it and, and, and just in, and, and improve the things that you know that you may be weak with and try to excel on those things and, and to kind of ground yourself as an on-air talent. Can you talk about how the industry may have changed, whether it's 24 hours news cycle, smartphones, instant replay? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think it, it's going to get to a point where I'm not sure, uh, I mean, consumers are, are getting there, especially in terms of highlights. So you can get your highlights from anywhere. You know, whether the news type of show format continues to grow and there's, you know, obviously a digital platform is, is the way to go. You know, I, I encourage young people today, if I'm pursuing a television opportunity, I would pursue a digital platform opportunity first would be the first step I would make if I'm pursuing a, a, an opportunity for myself in the career. And that's one of some, those are some of the things I talk with a lot of young people about. Pursue the digital platform. The digital platform will continue to grow and grow and grow. And I think that that's where the next phase in the next generation of how we consume a lot of our data, a lot of our information, you know, when, whether it's Twitter finding news, whether whether it's, you know, social media, it's really an amazing platform. So to me, I think the, the digital platform is really going to continue to grow, but I still believe, you know, television has a really solid background uh, in the industry. What uh, recommendations would you give to high school or college kids trying to get involved with sports broadcasting production? You mentioned pursue digital background. Yeah. You know, if you're at a high school and you have a radio uh, channel, you know, if, you, if you're doing something online, streaming your high school games, if you want to be play-by-play, -play, volunteer to do play-by-play -play on those games, whether it's volleyball, whatever sport it may be, have an expose yourself to those opportunities to do play-by-play -play or to be an analyst uh, on some of the sporting events that you have. Whether you have a news platform that you create, you know, have a vision, uh, create content is the key to the industry. If you can create content, meaning you can create your own platform, I mean, it's so easy these days to create your own visual platform and produce it yourself and post it online. And you can, that's where you can kind of grow your, your, your fan base. So I would suggest create content. Content is king. People want content from Yahoo to Google to YouTube. Everyone needs content 24-7. Uh, is really, really important. So take advantage of those opportunities. But I think the other thing, too, is when you're producing something, please make sure you take, uh, take the time to have someone critique it for you. You know, be careful what you produce. You know, you don't want to get outside of your lane where, you could, where it's really become infringing of someone's personal life. You know, be very, very careful of how the language is in your content that you're producing. Uh, make sure visually it's very, very tasteful. So... But make sure that you know you have someone that you respect who's in the industry that can take a look at it and give you that kind of uh, okay that it's, it's good to move forward with it. Do you have one sports team that you really follow on a day-to-day -day basis or you just follow every team in general? Well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very dear to my alma mater. So UCLA, you know, if they're on, regardless what sport they're playing, you know, that, that's, that will always be dear to my heart. Uh, on a professional level, you know, it's, it, I don't really have one, and I think since we lost, you know, the L.A. teams from Los Angeles in terms of football, it's kind of hard to follow. Um, but I'm a pretty much a collegiate person. I really like uh, college sports. Uh, again, college sports are wonderful. Uh, high school sports have grown tremendously over the years. They're getting more visibility. You know, there's more great high school games that are on television right now. So I, I really like what I would like to do. I'd like to see high school basketball get a little more love on television. It would be nice if, if that ever happens.
How does being a sports fan impact your job, at least on the collegiate level? Well, it doesn't really impact it. You know, you, you, you have to be objective about your business and you have to be objective about your craft. And, you know, for some reason, if UCLA's not playing well, you know, you obviously you have to be objective about it, you know. And so it doesn't really affect it a lot. You know, you root for them, you want to be good, um, but you have to tell the story because you have to be realistic about what's actually happened. Um, I love collegiate sports, uh, like I said, um, but I think you just have to be, continue to be objective about it. Now, to wrap up the AF show, one last question. Where do you see yourself in five to ten years, maybe? Well, you know, I, I've always loved, there's a couple of things I've, I've toyed in my head. You know, I, I either would want to have my own company where I'm teaching young youth in terms of the industry itself. Uh, my ultimate goal is always to be, was to be a president of a network, um, president of a sports cable network, uh, where I can sort of lay my, my vision on how I see the industry going. And so I mean, more than anything, that's probably the, the, the biggest challenge for me is, is have, getting that opportunity to have my own network so I can uh, like put my, my fingerprints on, on the vision that I've always had and, and have a wonderful brand that people will enjoy being a part of. Well, thank you for coming in today, Roy. Yeah, thank you for having me, I appreciate it. That's the AF Show, and we will see you next time.